Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 10 Beta 1 for developers. This is out right now for developers, it will be out for public beta testers in July, and then finally the public release will be around the time of the next iPhone, or whatever they update that, usually in the fall or around September. It came in at 1.9 gigabytes, I actually downloaded this over the air, but you can download it through the developer portal also. And let's take a look at the version number. You'll see this is version 14A5261V. And this update took quite a while to install. It was a good half hour actually on this device after it downloaded to fully install. It took a really long time for some reason, but it seems to work okay. It is a little bit choppy at times and 3D touch seems to work really fast now where it didn't work before in, in landscape. It seems to work really well now in landscape on the 6S Plus, so that's a great thing. Now they did some major updates with this update. One of the first things, or we'll talk about all 10 that they talked about in the keynote, but I'll show you a few things I think I've found along the way also. One of the major updates is to Siri. Siri is now open to developers, and what that means is now Siri can be integrated into other apps, such as WeChat and WhatsApp, or really any app that the developer chooses to use Siri in. So now you can use Siri within basically any app once the developer adds it to that. So you can text using your voice within WhatsApp or whatever you want, use Siri look up there, and it would be great. So you can do, for example, you could say, text Joe or whoever your friend is, text Joe in WeChat, how are you today? And it would send it to WeChat and text through that based on what you're saying. They've used what's called LSTM also to enable some intelligence within Siri based on your location, your contact, contact info, uh, based on where you are, your different address books, things like that. It will use that information contained only in the phone. It won't send it outside the phone and then help out your text to chat or your voice to text rather and being more accurate and using better intelligence to determine what you really want to say and what you're talking about. So that should be a great plus and we'll have to see how that works over time. It, it understands me fairly well when I go into Siri and say, what was the last NBA score? You'll see what it pops up with. And so it pops up pretty quickly there. It understands me well, but I know quite a few people it doesn't understand depending on what your accent is, what your nationality is, what language you speak in. So it should be able to understand that a lot better now. Another thing they've updated is notifications. So if I go to the home screen, which is also updated, and this is an iOS 10 wallpaper, the home screen now looks different. If I just put my finger down, it doesn't allow me to unlock it. I actually have to push down on the button in order to unlock the display. And that's nice because now I can see notifications as they come in. You'll see it will unlock like that, but it also has a feature where you can lift to wake. And I don't know, yep, it works now. So I lift it up, it, w it wakes up, I can see my home screen notifications. I'll do that one more time. Yep, let me see if I can try it again. There we go, and it pops open the screen so you can see it. Now if I slide to the left, I've got a bunch of widgets basically that you get in notifications. So you've got my weather channel, weather app, uh, calendar, all sorts of things in here. If I slide back to the right, I get the camera. So that's really nice. Also, just a quicker way to get into that and see notifications. There we go. Now, if I go back home, notifications have changed. I don't have any new ones, but hopefully one will come in while we're doing this video and you'll see they look a little bit different. One of the major updates is to photos and photos really needs a big update. And what they've done is add a lot of really Google-like features. It will scan different scenes and object orientations, memories, and it's all done locally on the device, not sent to a server somewhere. So basically what you could do is say, show me a red car in winter, and it should be able to do that. So let's see if we can get it to do that. It's still probably scanning. And I would assume this is going to take a while because it's probably scanning and I have a lot of different photos. But in theory, over time, it should be able to do that. We also have memories built in. It will build memories and it's still scanning mine, but it will build memories based on time frames, things like that. And then we have different albums and things that are uh, a little bit different looking that you see here. The next big change is to maps. And if I go into this folder here, and actually you can see this whole folder looks a little bit different, but maps itself has been redesigned and it now shows things such as live traffic. Uh, it's got basically reservations you can make in it to different things. And you can actually pay via 
Apple Pay. So one of the examples is they used Uber to pay right within Maps and had the Uber show up and it gave all that information within here. Right now you can see the traffic. I'm in the Charlotte area. Traffic's pretty heavy in many areas, so you'll see it actually updates the traffic on the routes that you're at. The actual navigation screen looks a little bit different. It's giving me the weather. And overall, it's pretty nice. I actually used it on my way home today, and it worked great. It looked pretty decent. And for those that actually still use Maps, I think it'll be a big upgrade. Music has gotten a very big redesign. And let me get out of this song. We'll go back here. This is a very big redesign, and I'm still up in the air about how I feel about it. Right now, you'll see it's very plain, very flat. And if I go to artists, here's a bunch of artists. It's very fast so far, as far as a beta. It's got For You. I don't actually have an Apple Music subscription right now anymore. We've got Browse. We've got Radio. There we go. So everything looks completely different. If I go back to library or go back, back and play this, that's what it looks like. That's the album out album art. I still can't rotate it and see anything in landscape mode, so they didn't do any updates as far as that goes. Uh, but that's pretty much it as far as music. It's just basically gotten this flattened look to it. Not sure what I think. I'm curious what you think. Let me know in the comments below, though, if, you're, if you like it or you don't like it. A lot of the transparencies are gone as far as that goes. The next big redesign is news. I actually do use Apple News quite a bit. If I go to news, let me show you this. This is one thing I found. 3D touch on news gives you the latest news right there. I also have uh, news on here also. Some pretty big updates. Uh, I have a channel on Apple News also, so if you want to follow me there. It's usually the same content you're watching in YouTube, though. But you'll see it's pretty nice, and they've got the weather kind of everywhere, which I actually appreciate, but... Just a little bit of a redesign, looks a little different. Another UI redesign they've done is with the control panel here, or control center. It looks a little bit different. I like the old one much better, personally. I like the transparency over everything as opposed to this, but it does work well. And then if I slide to the right, and you'll see there's a new notification at the top. If I slide to the right, I've got my, my music. If I tap down, there's AirPlay to whatever device I have. If I pull down from here, I wanted to show you that notification. It looks a little bit different. I can 3D touch on it and make it snooze or go to done. So just a little bit different looking. There's now a new app called Home, and Home is a HomeKit app. And what that means is if you have automated devices such as thermostats or lights or locks or things like that, it can all be right here. And you can actually automate it, automate it by saying Siri go to bed and you can have it turn off your lights, turn off, turn your thermostat down or up, uh, do whatever you want, turn on music and it should work. I will have to get some devices to try this out, but it's one thing they've added and it seems pretty handy to use. Before I forget, one thing I wanted to add with maps is that they actually opened it to developers. So they're, they're making the whole thing, the whole iOS ecosystem more open to developers to be able to integrate their apps more tightly with those different things so they can integrate right into maps now too and that's what i was talking about before where you can pay through apps and things with apple pay they also brought apple pay to the web you can pay on a mac with that also but that's a different video for mac o up a mac os update later on but this basically is really similar looking to before but 3d touch is a little bit changed Weather, you can see, looks a little bit different if I 3D press that. And then phone, they made some changes to. Now, phone, I'm not going to go into that, uh, but basically they made voicemail transcriptions of calls. So if you get a voicemail, you can actually just read it, similar to what Google Voice did quite a while ago. But it's a really great uh, idea, and it's going to be much better integrated right into here probably. They've also got extensions, third-party apps can now use it to identify spam, things like that. And then they have uh, some new VoIP APIs for developers to be able to integrate VoIP better into their phone calls across different business phone platforms, things like that. And that's pretty much it for phone. The biggest update to iOS 10 is probably messages. And let me go into messages. This is messages. And this is actually my brother's account. I can message back and forth. If you have multiple people, it shows multiple people across here. And you'll see this looks very different on the bottom. So if I go into this, I've got a couple different options. So here I can just type and say, hey, I'm making a video right now and testing this out with you. So I just texted him like that. Looks a little bit different. 
nothing crazy. If I go right here, I've got these different options. So I can take a photo and you'll see it turns on my camera. If I can spin it around, you'll see, you'll see it's pointing up at the ceiling here. There's my hand over it. You've got different options for your photos here as well. And then you can go to your photo library. You can also go to the heart and this is very similar to the Apple watch. So now I can draw a word and say hi and it will go away and he'll see it as though it was an Apple watch message. I can also tap and hold two fingers. It'll send, it won't send my heart rate, but it'll just send a heart. And then I can tap just like I could on the Apple watch. So it's basically the Apple watch's interface built right in. And then right here I can say, Hey, and send that. So those are all really neat and built in as well. You'll see it's spelling out. It's pretty neat. Then if I go to this app drawer, this is where it gets interesting. These are some songs. I can share these songs. So if I go into here, I can send this song to him. And as long as he owns it, he can play it. I'm not sure if you can play it if you don't own it. I haven't tried this with anyone that doesn't own it, but you can send it like that. Now if I slide, I've got classic Mac icons. So these are kind of neat. Slide again. I can find popular images and videos. So if I slide, I'm not sure if this is just pulling default things, but let me send him Finding Dory. And this is an animated GIF or GIF, depending on how you want to say it. And it shows up in the feed. It's pretty neat. So those are all included now. Now if I hit this again, go back to this app sharing, hit this button. This shows the different applications that can integrate with messages. And that's really nice. I can go and pick messages, classic Mac, Mac, anything, and people can add things later on. So one example they used is jib jab, different texting emoji applications can go in here and you have that option now. So if I go in here and I text again and I say, Hey, that movie looks really good. Comma. What do you think? Question mark. And then what it'll do is if I hit this emoji button, it will actually highlight the words that it thinks emojis will fit. So if I tap on movie, I can give the little movie reel and replace it. If I tap on think, I can put the little think emoji. So it does that automatically based on the words that are typed in there. And I think that's pretty neat. So if you can read that, Hey, that movie looks good. What do you think? You've got those little emojis to represent what you're saying. I think that's pretty neat and pretty clever. So those are all built in into messages. It's got rich links for web and video. It's got that camera and photos. Uh, other than that, you can do bubble effects like I was just doing. Uh, I'm not sure how to do all of these, to be honest. There's some new effects that I'm not really a hundred percent on. So let's see if I can do, see if I can do something else here. can do video. And bring that back down. So it's really not doing anything there, but there are some things they call bubble effects. You can do full screen tax celebrations, and I'll have to figure out all the additional ways to do all of these different things. And again, iMessage is open to devs. So now you can basically have your different things integrated directly into here. So that'll be really, really nice. Some of the other things they've changed is they've, they've brought conversation view to mail. They've made live photos better. Uh, split view on the iPad. You can do two Safari windows now. Uh, and then a big thing they pushed was actually privacy and privacy is really great because it's end to end encryption by default. It's got on device intelligence, basically to keep everything personal and specific to the device. So the difference is when Apple does something, it's done on the device. When say Google does something, they send it to Google servers for the most part, get information, then send it back. If Apple's sending anything out, it's anonymous. So it'll send it out anonymously and then return it and, and give it the information it needs. So Apple doesn't collect any of the, the user data or user profiling on searches or anything you do. And I think that's really great that they're making a big push in that direction. Lastly, one thing they noted or one thing they mentioned was that you can work live with multiple people in notes with notes, collaboration between a Mac, things like that. And you can also copy on the iPhone and paste on the Mac or vice versa. Anything you copy is now saved basically in a, a, a file that spreads across all different devices. Same with iCloud drive. There's a lot of little changes. They haven't necessarily mentioned too, that we're still going to find along the way. So these are some pretty major updates and something that I think 
we can all benefit from. And it's great to see them doing some huge changes to photos and messages in Siri and basically everything we wanted with the exception of maybe a file system drawer or something along those lines that they'll probably never do. I would love to hear what you think about what should be added to iOS 10. So far, it looks good. It's not terribly stable usually, these first betas, usually not until iOS beta 3 iOS 10 beta 3 or 4 usually is when they'll get stable. Uh, that was the case with 9. And right now it seems to work okay, but occasionally when I'm texting or typing it glitches, it slows down and freezes in different areas so far from what I've seen. Usually on betas, battery life isn't great either, but I'll, I'll keep you updated with that with all the different betas and the different changes that come along with that. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're going to get the beta and you've tried it out, let us know in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.